Hello, we're back with another listener viewer questions. This is um, not Todd's tips or numbers. Dad and John are on the couch over there, a little bit different as usual. Usually dad and I are right there, but uh, we're going to be talking about dad's journey, how he got into voiceover, some things that maybe led to it. And then um, his one, years one through basically 14 now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and so Johnny was kind of there at the start. I was in high school. Um, so I don't know all the ins and outs, but John was there. So he's going to help dad out and remember things and talk about some stuff. So we will get to that right now. Yeah. So I have a piece of paper here. You'll see us reference it just simply because we didn't want this to take forever and a day. And, uh, you know, sometimes old people can go on and on and on. And I'm the only old person in the room, so it's directed at me. So anyway, to kind of keep us on track, I thought I'd just make a little bit of an outline. So I'll be referring to this and you guys hop in whenever you want. Um, kind of a, a prelude to my voiceover career is I, I was always kind of enamored with radio. And I remember going to the Dane County Fair in the early 70s. Maybe I was 10, 11 years old. And uh, a radio station that's still here in the Madison area, WISM, 1480 AM, 98.1 FM, they, uh, they did a live remote there. And some of my, the people that I had listened to for a long time, like Clyde Coffey, that was his name. He was the morning guy. And Bill Short with sports. What a name for and Clyde Coffee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In yeah, the yeah, morning. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It wasn't his name. It was a, it was course, a Nick. Yeah. It, was, it was an on-air name. Jonathan W. Little, um, a guy that actually hired me for voiceover work later on, worked at that station, Bob Abella. Mm. You guys oh, have met really? Bob. Yep, just And uh, so they were kind of the station. They were top 40 station, and they were cool, and they were hip. And uh, so... I remember going to the Dane County Fair in Madison, Wisconsin, and we went to this one area and they were doing a live broadcast and I was enamored and hooked. Mm. I thought that's exactly what I wanna do. I wanna do radio. <clears throat> and uh, so that was maybe <clears throat> when I was 10, 11, 12 years old. And so um, when I got to be a sophomore, junior in high school, a friend of my older brother's who brother who graduated in 1976, two years before me, he got an overnight job. This is when before voice tracking and automation and stuff. So if you had your station on all night, then you had somebody there. And he worked the overnight at a country station. An AM station that had to shut down uh, was right next door. I mean, just across the hallway. And so he'd go in there and I went in with him overnight and I'd play radio, talk into the mic, play, you know, commercials, all sorts of stuff, and just kind of have my own radio show. I did that three or four times with him, and I thought that was just great. Um, and so I decided to go into radio as a career. I went to a small college. They had a broadcasting department and a campus station. I started working on there in the fall of 1978. Uh, I got there in August of 78 by, I don't know, November. I had weaseled my way in to the radio station and had a had a shift there. And uh, so from 1978 to 81, when I graduated, I worked on the station and I helped start a radio station uh, in Tomo, Wisconsin. Um, and then uh, I was hired on as the station manager and, uh, and uh, department head of, by that time, a citywide radio station. I was there for about seven or eight years. And in like 1985 or 86, I got my, a call from somebody that I'd done some editing work for. He had heard me on the radio and they had a short one page, 60 second um, little radio advertisement that they wanted. I drove across town, did the script all the way back in one hour and they sent me a check for 60 bucks. Wow. Now I was making <laughs> $10,000 a year and so $60 was a lot of money. And I thought to myself, I've got to get more of this. This is, this is something that I want. But in the 80s and even into the 90s, there just wasn't any opportunity. You either had to live in New York or L.A. or Chicago, <clears throat> uh, go to a studio. A home studio is just out of the question because they were 50, maybe 50, $60,000 uh, for all of the equipment. And you had to send everything 
by cassette or reel to reel. True. There's just no way. No internet. No internet. Point. Yeah. And so uh, I was in part time or full time radio from 1978 to 2008, almost 30 years nonstop in some form or another. So um, that was that. That was kind of the precursor. Um, I had a full time job and a part time radio gig for most of those years, but I couldn't do anything else because, you know, the internet wasn't up, home studios, plus I had a wife and six kids. And so I had to pay the bills and radio and this other job was, was what I had to do. So in 2011, I lost my full-time job and uh, wasn't in radio anymore because it was 2008 when I quit. Um, and I dove into voiceover. I wanted to try it. I didn't know how it would go. I didn't know what I was doing. Uh, didn't know how to get any work. <laughs> and so I just started contacting local businesses. I contacted our local hospital and I met with them. They thought it was a great idea to do their telephone messaging. We had meetings. I met with several of the board. Uh, I wrote up a script and we got to the point where it's just, we don't even, I didn't know how to take my voice and get it onto their system. Oh. And they didn't know either. So it was like that, like a like hours and hours of work, meeting with them, calling them, uh, writing the scripts, doing the work, <clears throat> and it nothing nothing happened. Tough. And so I, I kept doing that and doing that. Local businesses, I would get some people to say, "Yeah, we can we can you know have you do it." And I think I think I made a little bit of money here and there, but um, but from August of 2011 to December of 2011. That was when, and I don't know exactly, it was really pretty early on, I was searching YouTube and I found Bill DeWeese. And I liked Bill because uh, there wasn't a lot out there for VO coaches at that point, <laughs> but he seemed to just be kind of a simple business, horse sense, a common sense businessman. And that resonated with me. And he started to talk uh, early on about where do you get work? Well. You don't go to local businesses or even national businesses because they usually farm it out to an ad agency or a video production company. Oh, okay, so video production companies. So I started contacting video production companies, Googling it. The same thing that you boys do for VO Marketing Pro and my assistant Andy still does, just digging for video production companies, ad agencies, voice rosters, e-learning companies, those types of things. I did at that point, starting in about 2012, I did Voices.com. I did ACX, which is Audible, which is Amazon. And I did uh, direct email marketing. And right up here where we are was where my office used to be. And I would, I had my computer up here and I would send out email templates, dig, send out email, email templates if they wanted me to send something out or do an audition, run all the way down to the basement to my whisper room and send that out, run back up here and start doing cold calls and, um, and, and email marketing. And I just did that like a fiend, nonstop, eight hours a day. When I wasn't working, I was doing direct marketing. And, and that's kind of where you, you kind of started. Uh, uh, you helped us a little bit financially, gave us a loan <laughs> to pay our bills during those early days. And uh, you were right there marketing. You kind of helped with uh, uh, invoicing, um, encouragement. And, did you do any uh, editing? Or not I don't think point. John did any. You editing. had plenty of time still for that. Yourself, well, I did. Probably. Yeah, good, good question. Uh, Drew was actually in between college and working, and so he did uh, a lot of my audio book mm -hmm. editing. Uh, for three years, I think I did about thirty audio books total in those three years, and they're a lot of work. So you say, oh, 30 in three years. That's well, that's that's one almost one after another, and that was almost all residual. Um, not per finished hour. I did a few of those, but, um, yeah, so that was the first, the first year. And, and I don't know, I think demand, you're going to have demand put up, uh, my years mm -hmm. and my income from, yeah, go ahead. No, I just was going to ask what, uh, not that this is a huge deal, but 
Did you get your Whisper Room your first year that you started? I think it was the next summer, if I remember right. And do you remember what type of microphone you had? Just not that it's a uh, big deal. I had an uh, Electra Voice REM, RME, RME, RME 30. Okay. It's a, it, it was a, it was a, it, it, it was a um, real nice three, $400, basically radio announcer. Oh, okay. Uh, um, didn't have a lot of nuances and stuff, but it could take, you know, lots of different voice. Well, I mean, we had them at the radio stations that I worked at. So okay. they're workhorse type things. Um, and so, yeah, I had one of those for maybe a year or so okay. before I got I just my was TLM 103 or two. Um, so uh, <clears throat> in 2011, I made, in those months with Voices.com, uh, maybe a little bit of direct marketing a local maybe, and I can't remember exactly. I know the number, I know the figure. Um, and then um, some ACX books, I made $11,000, which doesn't seem too bad, but um, I thought I was, you know, really smoking. I thought <laughs> I was really going, going great guns. Um, so in 2012, I really started doing direct email marketing. Whenever I didn't have a job, and I've told this story before, my wife Becky would say, any jobs for tomorrow? Nope. You got anything on the line? Nope. Um, and and that's just the way it was. But I just got up with a hunger and thirst for marketing, direct marketing. I just didn't know any better. So I just did it, you know? And it seemed to be working. I was getting some responses, and I was able to send demos and things like that. And, and, and my goal was that year of... <laughs> That year of uh, 2012, I had a goal of $125 a week, $125 a week. And I started to make that. And sometimes, like I mentioned, Baba Bella, mm -hmm. I'd go into Madison and he would have a, a $125 or a $200 job for me. And it's like, yeah, I'd take that all the time. And this was before Upwork, Fiverr, yeah. any of these things Correct. were around. So yep. direct email marketing was kind of the... Site kind agents. of the only, other than Agency. yeah voices.com acx that was kind of the way to get it still is not that i'm but it to get started you had to you had to jump into the the deep water right away the deep end yeah and 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 some people can maybe you know correct me on this but because i i didn't have time to be watching a lot of different coaches and mentors and there just there just wasn't that much out there, and I don't think there was that much out there talking about direct marketing because we were still, you know, that think about it. That was 14, 13, 14 years ago, and we still have this mindset of 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 agents, and some people still think I got to go to L.A. and I got to go to New York to really make mm -hmm. it, and so that was even a lot more. 10, 12, 14 years ago, that mentality. Mm -hmm. So there just wasn't that, I don't think there were that many people doing direct marketing. Not that I was a pioneer or anything like that, but I, I just think that that was, you know, just the way it was. So um, then in uh, in 2013, did I say I made $36,000 that year? I don't remember. 2012? 12. In 2012, made $36,000. Um, by 2013, I had picked off a really good Recurring. client from Atlanta, and they used me lots. In fact, I think I made fifteen to twenty thousand dollars that year from them. And uh, I did stuff for Verizon, you know, like e-learning stuff for Verizon and training and things like that. Um, and that year, I made sixty-five thousand dollars. But there was a problem, and the problem was is this: uh, my Ability to do voiceover and edit, <clears throat> edit quickly was still on the learning curve. And they were sending me enough work that I was like, ooh, I better not do too much marketing. Otherwise, I'm going to get in trouble here and I'm not going to be able to put the work out. And so my marketing went down that year. So the next year, I did the same stuff, but because I relied on that client, even though I knew intellectually I shouldn't do that, the next year I made $59,000, which, by the way, was was $10,000 more than I had ever made in my life. But I went backwards that year from 65 down to 59 because of a lack of continuing to market. And that's what I tell people all the time is, is you have to market, 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 
And if you think you're getting busy, don't get too worried about it. Just Double keep marketing. marketing. Yeah, just keep yeah. marketing because you'll have dry spots. And it's it's a little bit like the crack of a whip. You get that first thing there and you say, okay, got it. But then that whip kind of snaps. And that's what happens with market, market, market. You get some jobs. And then if you stop marketing, boom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Especially if you don't have a lot of clients. So you got you to gotta market and build that book of business so that you have more and more people coming back to you. I'll stop there in case somebody has any comments about that. John was helping me just part-time kind of not for, I don't know, for any pay even. I can't remember. Did I even pay you? I don't think I, probably until 2016 when I started to help out with your Fiverr did I see any mm. sort of, and even 2016 was kind of not a ton. Of, I, if I remember correctly, not a ton that you made in 2016 yeah. or yeah. 2016 with your Fiverr. So made a little percentage of, of the Fiverr jobs once. Once you started making money on that, so that was nice. We've got to, we've got to make up for all those lost years. <laughs> you're not getting paid. Um, so, so in in 2014, I made fifty nine thousand dollars through direct marketing, still ACX and Voices dot com. Um, by that time, like I said, I'd done about thirty audiobooks, and I was getting busy enough uh, with direct marketing that I I stopped doing audiobooks because they're just a lot of work. I didn't really enjoy it that super much. Um, some people really enjoy it, and mm. that's fine. Uh, in 2015, through direct marketing and Voices.com and a little residual income from ACX, I made $81,000. I thought I had arrived, mm -hmm. because that was like, wow, $81,000. I think when we took all of our expenses off, I think we still cleared like $62,000. It was just fantastic. And it was that year that I started to ponder, what if I had somebody that would market for me all the time, at least part-time, spend their time digging and building a database and, and really just having it go day in and day out a few hours a day. I remember us wrestling with that a lot yeah. because you had had that downturn in mm -hmm. 2014 yeah. And this was coming, starting to get better, but you were like, oof, hmm. can I afford to handle, or excuse me, can I afford to pay somebody, you know, whatever, and also pay, you know, pay my bills and so that if all of a sudden things just start to go south again or something doesn't come through. So I remember that being yeah, quite exactly. the decision yeah. that you were, we were, the family was pondering. So yeah, yeah, that's, that's a good point. I, I really wrestled with that because I'm quite conservative and I didn't want to ruin my you know, my fledgling business. I mean, that was, you know, in 2015. So basically I did 2012, 13, 14, and then during 15. So it's like three and a half years old. And, you know, that's what we say, you know, you're still in that fledgling kind of tender plant life, if you will, of your rolling the boulder up the hill, you're still pushing, pushing, pushing. But I had done enough direct marketing and you had helped um, that I, was confident that I was going to keep going up. I didn't know to what degree, but I had built a pretty good book of business already. And it seemed like people were wanting to use me and I was getting more confident. And so I hired my assistant, Andy, he's still with me uh, in January of 2016. And uh, then for 12 hours, every single week, he digs and stays in front of people and sends out mass emails. And now he also keeps kind of the master database that you guys own yep. as VO Marketing Pro. He's done a very, very good job. He wouldn't find no. many people outside of our family that would be as good of a employee as he has been. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, he it's have, hiring him first was the best decision I ever made, which is why and this is sorry, it's just a little commercial for VO Marketing Pro. If you don't have the time to do marketing yourself, we obviously think you should always do the hybrid approach, which is you do it. But that's where VO Marketing Pro can come in, where for a fraction of the cost of what I was, what I pay Andy, you can have emails sent out so that if you get busy or so that if you're sick or so that you go on vacation, marketing is still happening. And that's what I like about having an assistant. And marketing just goes. I'm out on my tractor in the fall, beautiful time, raking leaves like I like to do. And I'm not worried that there's no marketing going on. And so 
marketing, marketing, marketing. And that's what VO Marketing Pro does for people. Again, for the fraction of a cost of what I pay my assistant. Mm -hmm. um, the next year in uh, 2016, I made $137,000 from 81 to 137,000. And I tell people, you know, don't plan on that your first year. People say, what? Your first year of having an assistant? You upped it by whatever that is, 19 56, and 37, 56,000 dollars? Well, of course not, because I had done three years of direct marketing with Jonathan's help, like a wild man, and on cold your, calls. On your own time, on without my own being time. paid even right. anything for it, right. per se, right. unless you got a job. Correct. Yeah. So in 2016, that was like, boom, I know that that marketing plan is going to continue to work uh, because I made $137,000. Uh, I did direct email marketing, voices.com, and Jonathan talked me into getting on Fiverr, which in hindsight, I'm very, very thankful. Foresight, I was doing it as a favor to you because if you said, well, I'll, I'll run it and just do it and... Uh, and, and, you know, I'll take whatever, 10, between 10 and 20%, depending on the job. Well, there were so many, as you guys well know, when you're on Fiverr, there's a lot of $5 jobs or $15 jobs. And it was tough when I was doing direct marketing jobs where for a two minute explainer video, I was getting $250 and then I turn around and get $8 for a two minute explainer on Fiverr. And like I've said, oh, I was yes. grumpy for two years with Fiverr, but, I just found out that, and, and we weren't very busy, like you said, for the first couple, three years. Correct. But then after that, um, after a gig review from somebody that knows Fiverr well, uh, we made the jump to top rated seller and Fiverr was a little bit in its heyday at that point. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I can't remember exactly, I'll get to that, but, um, but just this last week, we crossed the $450,000 mark on fiber. That's some and the first few years, there just wasn't that much. No, nice hamburger so that's money. A, you got yeah, there. that's, yeah, yeah. Hamburger money is right. But I, so I, I thank you. Yep. And I bless you, yeah. you were, for getting me on fiber. Um, so that's I'm still that. angry at Fiverr at this point, yeah, but I, yeah. no, I can still I, be there's a lot of people that I've started. Yeah. 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 I, there's a, there's it's a good reason. Hate. There's a good reason. We've yeah. talked with other people mm -hmm. that are on Fiverr and they make really good money on Fiverr, but there's, there's the ever presence of it being a love hate relationship. That's for sure. It's a tiger by the tail. Mm -hmm. So in 2016, I hired my first assistant for 12 hours, Andy. In 2017, I kind of hired mom. Uh, we had enough money in our coffers to be able to hire her part time as the financial assistant. She does a great job of doing the invoicing and staying on top of that. She also edits uh, kind of as an overflow editor. Um, I did direct marketing, Voices.com and Fiverr, and we cracked the uh, multiple six figures in 2017. It was 201,000. I'm 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 uh, rounding down on all of these. I didn't make exactly 201,000. It was 201 something and cents, but I just round down for ease of of yep. viewing. Uh, 2018 direct marketing again. Voices.com. Fiverr, you know, by that time, Andy was probably through the database, a fairly large database by that time, maybe seven, 8,000, gone through it one or two times. He was digging like crazy. I hired a second assistant, Phil, who he did editing for me because I did a lot of e-learning work. And anytime he worked 30 hours for me, anytime he wasn't editing, he did marketing for me more direct marketing. And trust me, there were weeks where I didn't have a ton of editing and he was working, you know, feverishly picking off three, 400 uh, yeah. new, new yeah. uh, uh, contacts. So by uh, 2018, I had uh, a marketing assistant, I had a financial assistant and an editing assistant that were, you know, about a, a full time and a half uh, employee the combined. 2018, I made $211,000 with direct marketing, Fiverr and Voices.com. 2019, Fiverr started to go up. I made $231,000 with those three things. Uh, 2020, Fiverr kind of- crazy. Yeah. $100,000, $98,000 you jumped up from, from 2019 to 
2020. Yeah, a lot of that was fire, wasn't it? It's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Fiverr was, was, start, so busy. was starting to get going. There was a time like in July or August of that year that it was you. We had changed our gig up mm -hmm. to move more and more money because it was coming. The jobs were coming in so fast. And so many of them throughout I've a week. Stop. Uh, yeah, that was like we, driving say, crazy. Was, <laughs> I remember a couple of times. I can remember you sitting over on your your chair that you like to sit in and saying, "We got to make this stop." And then we made a change. I remember you you were, it, you, you it was still coming in, and we had made the change. It almost got another, worse there. It almost got worse. I think you changed we, yeah. it, and P, they rewarded us for yep. changing. Yep. Yep. yep, which was Good. a great problem yeah. to have. But it was, yeah. I remember them. It was almost a panic because we mm -hmm. were having to we were you were working so much doing yeah. fiber jobs and they were a lot better they were getting a lot better pay but they were still lots and lots of work you know so i think i did i think one time i did 45 projects in a week from fiber fiber mm -hmm. that was on top oh, of right. voices.com a few and my direct marketing it was like it was like 75 projects and and of course with fiber you know sometimes you're not making the most but you're still and this is what i explained to jonathan you're still dealing with a client it's mm -hmm. still a client, yeah, and mm -hmm. you still have revisions, and you still have to service them. So that was that was that was that was crazy. That year, uh, two thousand twenty was uh, two hundred and twenty three hundred twenty nine thousand um, uh, dollars. Two thousand twenty Fiverr, I think, was the biggest ever. I look back, yeah. that was one hundred and twelve thousand dollars. I think that was tw twenty wow. and twenty one was when it was crazy, especially in the summer. Um, and my, my income with direct marketing, Voices.com and Fiverr went down a little bit, but there's always a reason. And you got to identify what that reason is when your income goes down. Maybe it's that you're not working as hard. Maybe it's the economy. Maybe it's like now AI and some of the things that are happening in the world. But for me, it was, Vo it was uh, VO Marketing Pro started those, those two years. Yep. And uh, and so I, I poured a lot of resources into that and a lot of marketing of mine actually went towards, you know, getting VO Marketing Pro kind of off the ground. So I was fine with that. And, I, and I'll be fine with that in the future if I start to slow down. I started it in 2021. Yeah, well. yeah that's in right. In April of 20. I yeah. Started in yeah. before Good Christmas, point. we were practicing and you were helping me out and yeah. and I was building my hobo for it. Anyway, that's yeah. not my, my journey we're talking about, but that's another reason you were helping me out. Our so. battery is running low there. I don't know if yeah. that's okay. That's okay. Yeah. We'll, I'll, we'll get I'll, through this year. I'll clean, I'll clean, I'll clean right? this up. Yeah. Um, so uh, 319, I went from 329 in 2020 to 319, even though my income in Fiverr went up quite a bit in 2021. 2022, I made the most ever, and I think I don't. I'm not going to get there this year. It'd just be almost. It'd be almost impossible. It and would we, be impossible. And, we, and like you had said in the last year, that we have some reasons why. We had, we know why. Correct. Yep. 2022, um, I made 331 thousand with direct marketing. Voices.com. Fiverr was like. $79,000. And I started Upwork and I think I made maybe a thousand bucks or something that year in uh, Upwork. So this year, uh, 2023, we're recording this first week of October. Uh, so far, I've made $230,000. I'm happy with that. Uh, I don't know if I'll reach the 300,000 mark. We're going to have to hustle a bit. Um, I do direct marketing still. A little bit of Voices.com, though that has changed for me. Fiverr continues to stay. I think I'm at, what did I say? What does it say there? Is it 50, 54,000? $54, yeah. $54,000 so far in Fiverr. And Upwork, maybe I have a three grand in Upwork so far. The, the, you know, maybe we can just, I don't know if you have any other questions, but <laughs> one of the things that I, I think about a lot in my 14 years is I don't know if I had the best plan. And even if I had a good plan, I don't know if I worked it perfectly. I just had a simple plan that seemed to work. And so I just worked that plan. I've said that a lot to people that watch these things. Get a simple plan that works and then work that plan. And I've had to tweak over the years. You can see that I didn't do direct marketing up until the second year. I did ACX a lot and Voices.com. There hasn't been that many things that have stayed exactly the same. And uh, now, just lately, Voices.com founder, CEO, David Cicerelli, he stepped down. So that's going to change again, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. uh, there's more freelance things coming on the scene. We've got AI. And I'm still having to kind of listen 
carefully, but I still have a basic plan that works. And I just keep working that plan day in and day out. And, uh, and so I don't know, um, what else there is to well, say. Going through it with you, I remember <clears throat> those times I would sit up here and just look through, um, I would just look through, um, different, go, go through Google and send out emails and, and keep track of those things. But there was, you know, I, I kind of remember not thinking like, well, I don't even know if those emails will come back, but I just knew that that's what we're supposed to do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and that's, I don't make me to make a plug for, um, Vomp. for Vomp, but, um, but that's what we're doing. It's not, we, we, we know that it works now, but that's what we're doing. I mean, Joe sends out every day of the week that we're here or that we're here most of the time in mean, the beginning of the month, as we've said to people, if they watch the numbers, uh, we make some cleanup work and every once in a while we go on vacation. But other than that, we send out and you don't know, um, uh, you get warm responses back and we report those, but sometimes it's, you don't get them for quite some time or it's a couple touches that you have to go through. So I just remember thinking, I don't know for sure if this is working, but this is just what we have to do. And it's obvious that over time it does work. And so some people don't have the luxury of, you know, you lost your job. And so this is what you had. And just, I remember going on drives and saying, I don't, you know, there'd be a company and said, I don't want to look back and say, mm -hmm. I didn't give it my all on this. I don't want to go back and do a nine to five job. And some people either like it or they don't have another choice. They've got a more, they've got mortgages. They've got, you know, kids that are in school. They've got so many other things going on. So that we're very sympathetic and understand that everybody's situation is different. That's why we say your business is your business and it's none of our business, but sticking with it and direct email marketing. We say that all the time. And I think people can be hear that a lot, but I think this journey proves that sticking with it does, does work. Um, and I, you know, from, from an example, I remember you saying that mom would ask questions as, Oh, well, have you got any jobs this week? And I remember having access to your email and looking consistently <laughs> to see if there was a job coming in for you. <laughs> and lots of times there wasn't. And, um, just kind of sticking with the plan and not getting all hot and bothered by that and not giving up. Cause if you would have given, there's a good chance if I'm you, you know, with all the things where the obstacles that when you're away, your son, meaning me having to help with some of your bills in 2011 and 12, I remember our Christmases were not, they never were overly extravagant as it was. Um, but I don't think they we were, got anything. We didn't Christmas, get hardly anything though, that, was those fine. years, which was fine. Mm -hmm. But you know, we've been through those hard times and I remember those, that was happening and you still just didn't know what was going to happen. We, I, for some reason I thought that if we just kept doing it, things would work out. And we, that's what we believe at VO marketing pro is if you stick with it and we're seeing that for people, especially the ones that are staying with it. Mm -hmm. um, and as you can see, you might not make much the first couple of years. Um, so you've yeah, got to find a way to get income. Say. You got to find a way to get income other way or, um, you know, maybe your wife or your husband works, however the situation is, but, but sticking with direct email marketing, that's the backbone to all of your, Correct. your yep. jobs here. And yep. so, um, people that sometimes say, well, you know, I've given it time and it's just not working or three months, know, whatever. Six months, nine and that's, months. again, that's not an yeah. attack on the person. There's, there's lots of circumstances, so you have to do what's best, but I don't believe that it doesn't work over time. Um, well, it took dad for, I mean, it took dad four years to get to eighty thousand yep. dollars, and and three of those, well, four of those years, he was doing direct email marketing. Four yeah. years. So if you so. can't, if you can't afford a, a company like us, which um, is to be completely honest, is we we are quite cheap <laughs> compared to what other companies or what uh, what dad, it would cost you to do what you or cost what you to do it. Yeah, right. yeah. Um, because I mean, I've gone through. I do. I do. Uh, when I don't have anything to do, which isn't a ton of time that I have. Um, when I'm not working for things for uh, people for VO Marketing Pro, but if I'm if I don't have time, I do the same thing. I go and look for new contacts, and it takes time to do. And so, paying somebody to do that, it's going to cost a lot more than hundred dollars a month or whatever, plus maybe a percentage if you're doing that. Um, but if you can't afford that, understandable. But I wouldn't give up on direct email marketing, or if you've tried it for a while with us, I wouldn't give up. If you decide to go somewhere else, I wouldn't give up on direct email marketing because it does work. 
Um, and we're seeing that with Hudson. We're seeing it with the members that are a part of our group that yeah. have stuck with it for a long time. <clears throat> so. as, far, as far as I know, and th- this, I hope this doesn't come off as bragging. It's just, you know, it's just a fact. Last year, I was 200, excuse me, $800 shy of $200,000 in, in direct marketing mm-hmm. income. And so I don't know, you might know of somebody that A, provides their numbers and B, makes $200,000 in direct marketing. I don't know of anybody that does. Again, I've had so much help. I don't do much <laughs> direct marketing myself. Jonathan I thought you were going to say you don't do I much in general. You yeah. don't do much well, in that's general. Fair. That's fair. And so that, um, that helps your business out quite a bit too because yeah. you don't really go anywhere besides the mail, well, mailbox. True. And, true. I, I, I'm, a, I'm a homebody. There's no doubt about mm-hmm. it. But um, but $200,000, I don't know of too many people that make that. I don't know of anybody that makes that. So I think that if there's an area that there might be some expertise and experience in, some valuable experience, I think that, that, that we've proven that, you're proving that with your direct marketing, you most likely will be in the, after in your third year, you'll be in the top 25% of earners, Over which doesn't, it's not a ton of money. Yeah. It's $40,000. Right yeah. Yep. And uh, you guys grew up watching this and helping and uh, you, you do the same things that I do for people of VOMP. And so there's a type of faith, if you mm-hmm. will. Faith is basically, whatever it is, faith is doing something right without knowing the, Believing the, that the, the outcome end, is going to be the out, yeah. yeah the outcome the outcome isn't for sure, and so there's a faith that there is with direct marketing, and I just had that. I just thought I've got to make this work. I'm going to make this work, <laughs> and so I just did, and uh, and and that's kind of the mentality you have to have. Whether you do yourself, you have VO Marketing Pro do it, or you have a hybrid approach. Mm-hmm. You've got to have that kind of faith. I'm going to do the right thing. Same thing as saying get a good simple plan that works and work that plan. It's a type of faith because you don't know what the outcome is going to be. You're, you're expecting that to happen. Mm-hmm. So I guess there's an opportunity to feel, there's a lot of feelings that go into involved to it too. You can be one day you can wake up and say, Oh, I got to market again. or I got to do this or that, but not riding that roller coaster as we say, cause it's, it's tempting because it's just such a, mm-hmm. you have no clue. You're sending out to ABC video production company. And then you're sending it to DEF video production company and you're sending out lots of them. And it's like, nothing's coming back or, Hey, we don't have anything or we don't have anything or we don't use it. Or you might, if you do it the right, you know, in the correct way, if you will, having unsubscribe, you might get some unsubscribes or you might get a person that's grumpy with you or whatever. Mm-hmm. You will there's get a, a lot of that. that's grumpy with you. You and will. So, and so you just, you can say like, Oh no. And then there might be weeks where you do really well and you're like, Ooh, this is really working. And then you don't do your direct email marketing, but not writing that is, it's not as easy as it's, as it, Faith is, uh, yeah. it's not as easy as you mm-hmm. think. And so we, we understand that too. And that's what we're here to help too is with the mindset as well, because it's, time, it's yeah. a day in, day out. That's what faith is too, is this mm-hmm. not allowing yourself to go up and down with that and having yeah. people that can help you remind you of what your steps are. Mm-hmm. And so um, anyway. Yeah, I just was going to say, if, if you're somebody who's just starting direct email marketing by yourself, you're not having us do it for you. If you're slow, you're what you most likely will be. I, <laughs> I was slow. I would encourage you to, if you, you know, maybe have a project here or there, or, you know, looking at Upwork, looking at Fiverr, or whatever you can do to try to find jobs to audition for. If you're sitting there and that's taking you two, three hours, and you've got, you know, three, four more hours of your day, I would say go and go and look for direct email marketing clients. Because that's mentally you'll be able to do something and that'll get your mind off of worrying about things. Yeah. Um, and so you can do something. Instead of sitting there and saying, I don't know what I'm going to be able to do. Well, mm-hmm. spend it looking for direct email marketing clients if you're going to do it by yourself. Because that just, then you're at least doing something. You're not sitting there thinking, okay, I've done all my auditions and everything like that. Now what do I do? Market. So anyway, thank you guys for doing Thanks. that. Thanks, Dad. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks to uh, one of our viewers for asking that question about Dad's journey. Uh, we will be doing more videos like this, so you can check them out. Um, in the listener viewer questions playlist. It'd be great to have some feedback or yeah. more mm-hmm. questions. We can springboard off of this yeah. conversation. Certainly. Thanks for your time, and we'll uh, see you on the next video that we do.